The other day I was bored. So bored in fact that I was staring at text areas on websites as one usually does. Thinking to myself, wait, why do they always look so bland? I mean we've made buttons look cool as well as a standard input element. And the most we really do with text areas is change the font. That's when I decided to try and fix this by creating a cool but slightly impractical version of a text area. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. The way this works is that as you type, the letters come moving up whilst rotating before settling into place. Then as you remove them, they fall off the screen. And I know what you're thinking, rhythmic, where the hell would I use this? To which my answer would be nowhere, it's just fun. Anyway, where you use this, that's up to you. Now for the tech, we'll be using React.js because YouTube loves this framework and frame emotion. We'll also be using Tailwind CSS for styling because who really wants to write vanilla CSS? Just before we continue though, I have a job board for my beautiful community which shows web developer roles along with their salaries. So check that out if you're in the market for a new job. You can also sign up to the newsletter where I send jobs straight into your inbox on a weekly basis. If this interests you, you can check out webdevjobs.io. Okay, so back to the project. The first thing we need to do is initialize our React.js project. In a directory of your choosing, go ahead and create a React application using npm create vite at latest. I'm going to name this cool text area and then select React and TypeScript. Once you've done that, CD into the project and then install what vite provided us. And then we need to install Frame Emotion. Once we have that, our final installation will be Tailwind. So we can enter npm install dash d Tailwind CSS post CSS auto prefixer. Then to initialize it, mpx tailwind init dash p. Now that we have our installations out of the way, open the project in a code base and inside of the tailwind config, change the content property to have the following. This can also be found in the tailwind docs. Then inside of the index.css file, remove everything and add tailwind base, tailwind components and tailwind utilities. Then for the body, I'm just going to apply background color of neutral 900. If you've watched my past videos, you'll have noticed that I'm a big fan of the font space grotesque, which means that I'm going to add this in here too. So head over to the Google font site and search for space grotesque. Once you have it, click on get font, then embedded code. We only want the regular weight, so click on the one value and then copy the first code segment on the right. Back inside of the index.html file, paste it in the head tags. Then inside of the tailwind config file, extend the font family to include space grotesque and in the array state, the font name and the typeface, which will be space grotesque and sans serif. Once that's done, delete the app.css file as we won't be needing it. We can then jump into the app.tsx file where we'll remain for the rest of this tutorial. At the top, we can import use ref and use state from the React and then animate presence and motion from frame of motion. Then define the app component and export it. Inside of the app component, we will return a main tag with the classes padding of five, flex and flex column. Then inside of it, a text area with the classes opacity zero, width zero and height zero. Underneath that, a div element with the classes minimum height of 60, background neutral 900, text slate 100, font space grotesque, white space pre wrap text XL, minimum width of full, padding of five and overflow X hidden. The reason for this is that we will be displaying the text inside of the text area within the div. If we go ahead and run this by typing npm run dev and then head to the browser, we'll see a dark page. However, when we open the elements tab, we can see that we have a really small text area and then our div that we've created. The div will basically act like our text area. So let's add the logic for that. Back in the code, we can create a reference called text area ref and set that to a use ref that expects either a type of HTML text area element or null. By default, we can set this to null. Then underneath, we can create a use state with the variable text value and function set text value, which by default will be an empty string. We can then add an on change to the text area so that we update the text value state using the set text value function and also attach the text area ref to it. Then on the div, we can add an on click so that when it is clicked, we focus on the text area ref and we can begin to type. Heading back to the browser, we can see that when we click on the div and start typing, our input shows up. However, we want to animate each character and right now it's just one long string. What we can do is loop through each of the characters and wrap each letter with a span tag along with the key index. Now when we type and inspect, we can see that every character is within a span index. Now it's time to animate them. First of all, we can add the motion prefix to the span tags and then add the initial prop, which takes in an object. Let's set the initial opacity to be zero and for the animate prop, we can set the opacity to be one. When we head back to the browser, we can see that as we type, the letters fade into view. The next step would be to have them move upwards. 
So back inside the code, we can add a Y value of 100 for initial, and then for animate, we can add a Y value of zero. However, when we try this out in the browser, nothing has changed. The reason for this is that the margins and padding for each letter is not being respected. Therefore, we cannot move upwards. So to fix this, we can do the following. We can set the class name so that if the character is not a new line, then we'll have an inline block and a margin right of 0.5, just to give it some room on the right. Otherwise, the class name will have inline as we want to preserve the new lines. Now, when we try this out, we can see that each of the letters are moving upwards to fit into place. When we start to remove the letters, we want them to start falling out of place. Right now, they're being deleted like usual text. So what we can do is add an exit prop and set the opacity to be zero, Y to be 100 and transition with a duration of 0.5 seconds so that it falls quickly. However, when we try this out, it doesn't seem to be working. The text is being removed as normal. Well, the reason for that is that when you're using the exit prop, you also need the animate presence component wrapped around it. So once we add that in and test it, we can see now how they're falling off. Final prop we need is a transition from initial to animate so that they come up slower. We can do that by adding in a duration of half a second and an ease of ease in. Now each character is coming up a lot slower. The final step is to add a rotation as they move up and fall off. So for that, we can add rotate 50 to initial and rotate zero to animate. Then in exit, we can add rotate minus 50. If we check that out, we can see how they rotate upwards. And then when we delete the characters, they fall off rotated. However, to give this a more natural feel, we can add some randomness to the way they fall. To do that, we can create a variable called rotate value and set it to be a random value between minus 100 and 100 by calling math.floor, then within that math.random multiplied by 201 and then deducting 100 from the entire result. We can then use this value as the rotate values in both initial and exit. Now, when we type, we should see a more natural rotation animation taking place as we enter values and remove them. And that folks brings us to the end of this tutorial. Go ahead and try and incorporate this in some way to your own sites and share the results in the Discord channel linked below. Otherwise, stay healthy, stay safe, and I hope to see you in the next video.